Hey everybody! It's Saturday, Sunday. I was gonna say it's Saturday, <laughs> Saturday night. night. Saturday night live. No, it's not Saturday night. It's uh, Sunday night. Sunday night. And we're Mike and Jen. And uh, even though it says Mike, I can make that go away. Uh, how does it do that? Why does it do that? Because you know I what? I was know. on somebody else. I did an interview, and uh, I had it say just Mike. So there, I made it go away because it's Mike and Jen, and uh, it's a Sunday night. And this is Ask Us Anything. And uh, it's been quite a week for us. We have gotten into this pattern of traveling during the week and coming back to our Sticks and Bricks home on the weekend. And then we got back late last night. Uh, not late, but well, not about that late, seven, but we got eight. back just before the storm hit. Huge storm. Uh, actually, a couple of tornadoes went through our area in southeast Michigan. And much of uh, southeast Michigan is in... Um, uh, without power. So uh, our daughter is here, our granddaughter's here, and they're going to spend the night, guess where? At our RV. <laughs> yeah, so another use for our RV is we're plugged into power. We have 30 amp power and it's nice and nice and uh, cool in there. We have the air conditioner working and it's all, it's all looking good. So. And they're very excited about it. It's like camping. It is like camping in our driveway. So mm -hmm. So welcome, everybody. We're glad to have you with us on this Sunday night, and uh, we're going to take your questions in a couple of minutes. We've got a really exciting new feature that we've been working on uh, that we're going to announce to everybody tonight. We announced it earlier today to our supporters and our members, and they have been joining and in, in, uh, taking part of that. We'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, let's go through how uh, this is going to work tonight with questions. And always helping us as we wrangle those questions and keep everybody from our various platforms because we simulcast this live on Facebook groups and pages and also on YouTube. Phyllis Carr, who keeps tra track of all that. Hi, Phyllis. Hi. <laughs> I, love I, I love hearing about your adventures out and about. So uh, since I'm stuck here and don't have an RV, so <laughs> you, can, uh, you can tell me as many of those as you want. It's always Phyllis, <laughs> we've been trying to get you an RV for how many I, years now? I, I can't tell you how much time I spend on, I've even dropped down now into Van Trader. <laughs> to look through a Van Trader. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like giving up. But anywho. Um, Don't give up. We have got to everybody. We're gonna have to make this like a, a GoFundMe to get Phyllis an RV. No, I mean, she can she that. can buy it, but you got to help. Yeah. Find it for <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the the people on YouTube have this all figured out. It said they've been doing this for a long time. So if you have a question, you type the word "question" in all caps, and then you type out your question, and and that's a good way for us to see it because we're getting questions in from Facebook and from YouTube into a single feed. And if you're on Facebook and you ask a question and it feels like it takes forever for us to get to it, that's because YouTube has already filled up a whole bunch of slots ahead of you. And of YouTube, we want to uh, give a shout out to Chris Cowley, who's our video editor, who is over on YouTube, uh, helping wrangle all the questions. And uh, Chris is also, if you're looking in the comments, he's posting comments as well, and links. And Chris, we, Always appreciate you. We have to find a way to get a webcam for Chris, don't you think, Phyllis? That's, yeah. Besides getting you an RV, the next thing is to get a <laughs> webcam for Chris. Yes, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. And so, yeah, so he can come on and just say hi. I don't want to talk. I'm too busy. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, but he keeps everybody in check over there on YouTube, and so that's really nice. He and he's very nice about everything, and he only throws you out if you're being weird and strange and unusual and trolling and oh, all that good stuff. So, yeah, he's gonna <laughs> so, kick you out. So do you want to help me with a big announcement for tonight? Sure. Okay. Sure. It's exciting. So here's the deal. Uh, we just announced this earlier today with our, our supporters and our members, and we want to now uh, tell you all about it. We have been working on this for a while. It is an interactive map that lists uh, all the various uh, RV campgrounds, boondocking places, attractions, uh, restaurants, what else? Uh, museums, dog cool parks, <laughs> yeah, oh, dog, dog parks. parks. That's yeah. important. The various <laughs> things that we have come across in our travels, and we wanted you to help list the ones that you've come across in yours. That's where that interactive word comes in. And uh, let's let's put up a link to it. We want you to go there. It's right there. 
if you go to uh, rvlifestyle.com interactive slash uh, map, you'll be able to uh, get a quick idea what it looks like. And then there's a, a down the bottom right, you can click because there's an app that goes with it. We really want you to get the app because the app then allows you uh, with your phone to be able to go on and say, oh, this is cool. I'm going to take a picture of that. And I'll post it on the map and share it with our entire community. Right. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about it, but that is, it's a pretty cool thing. Well, um, right there on, on this link down here, they can actually look at all the different places we've been putting on there for the past few days. And we've got about a hundred that we put on just now. about a hundred in there. Week. And, yeah. uh, but then to be able to contribute, then you do need to use the app to do that. So it's very exciting. We've had lots of people coming in and, uh, testing it out. It's wonderful. I, I think it's super cool. We want to uh, want to have hundreds and hundreds of you on there using that and sharing the spots you see, posting there. And then what's neat is you can you can search uh, you know by state. You can kind of find the spot you want. You can add comments. You can post photos. Uh, and if we all there's no cost for any of this. It's all it's free. Totally it's free yeah. A, yeah, it's just it's just a really cool resource. We'll talk more about it. I think I'm going to probably do some stuff on the podcast coming up on Wednesday with it. But uh, yeah, we could talk all day about it because it's like it's like a group journal. It's like a group camping yeah. journal, really. And you can sort and filter by um, places that have certain things, certain facilities too. So you can if there's um, if it's a Is state. This- Park, you can just click state park and it all filters out for only state parks. It's super. It's if you want just helpful. a boondocking spot mm-hmm. or dry camping, same thing. If you want museums, the things that, that our RV lifestyle community have found in their RV travels that are interesting. And yep. uh, it, it's pretty cool. You can yep. use your photos that you've got on your smartphone. You can also work it through your desktop too, but go there, join, uh, check it out. We'll come back. We'll tell you more about it tonight. All right, right, Phyllis, I'm going to let you start moderating. All righty. As we say, uh, wrangle the cats, you know, (laughs) uh, cat wrestling (laughs) or herding cats. It's kind of hard. First question comes from Despina Reyes. And Despina, thank you for being there every week. I see your name uh, on our list, and and, uh, it just brings a smile to our hearts because we really appreciate you being there week after week with us. With RV dealers being out of stock, is a selling price when placing an order? Above, at, or below the MSRP, any chance to negotiate? That darn manufacturer suggested retail price is not bending. Um, it is still a seller's market. Oh, I was going to download some photos. We spent some time this past week in Holland, Michigan, at an RV dealer where I had a couple of little uh, repairs made for our unit, and uh, they had no inventory. They said, yeah, you can spend the night, just park where we normally park the RVs. And I didn't understand what that meant. And we got there and uh, usually in front of this place are all these new RVs that they're selling. There were none. All the inventory has been sold. In the back row, they had some uh, used units, a few used units that they were selling, but um, there's, there's no inventory. There was no inventory. And this is true of many RV places around the country. Now, uh, you'll find lots of trailers. You can buy an RV uh, trailer, a mm-hmm. towable, as it's known in the industry, a towable, the RV trailer, travel trailer. Um, they're, they're quicker to produce. They're not uh, affected uh, by this parts shortage. That's mostly affecting motorized vehicles because they need those chips and you know how complicated they all are. Um, so as a result of all of this, uh, the MSRP, the manufacturer suggested retail price, is what they're getting. Sometimes people are paying above that. You've heard it happening in housing, in the housing market. It's happening. It's so crazy in the housing market. It's the same in the RV. Um, the, the salesman I talked to at the dealership we visited, uh, they told me that they are writing orders that won't be delivered for three years. In fact, one of the salesmen was going to retire in a year and a half, and he's writing orders that won't deliver until he has been retired for a year and a half. Crazy. It's crazy. I thought it was interesting what you shared about uh, when they can't get a part, like for a refrigerator or something, what they do or a microwave. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They were telling me stories. uh, uh, One of the dealers that they repped, uh, that they sold their product, it was like a $400,000 RV, a motorhome. And uh, 
all of a sudden, a couple of the new units had sold, came through, and instead of a microwave convection oven, they had just a microwave because they couldn't get the microwave convection oven. Well, as the salesman said to me, it's a $400,000 unit and you can't make a muffin in it? So on their own, they took out the uh, microwave and went out and sourced on their own. I think they bought Samsung convection ovens or some other sort of convection oven. And then they installed them. He said it cost them, the dealer, about a thousand bucks a unit to get the right thing in the unit. Uh, same thing with aluminum wheels. They couldn't get aluminum wheels. The RV manufacturers can't get them. They're offering to sell steel wheels, but you know, aluminum is what you want because you want to keep the weight down. And uh, so this RV uh, dealer is competing with the manufacturers. He's going out and sourcing and finding different places to get aluminum wheels. It's just insane, folks. It's insane. And I think what really bothers me about this is there are so many other people who kind of do what we do uh, as influencers. And many of them are, are paid by the manufacturers to drive their units. And so they can't tell you exactly what it's like. Uh, that's why I'm glad we bought our own. We, we did. Um, you got to tell people what's going on out there. Uh, the delay on the new parts is, is, and it's not just RVs. You know that. It's tr and nobody's dissing any of the RV manufacturers. The industry, their association keeps advertising, this is all perfectly normal. Everybody's doing great, enjoying the RV lifestyle. But it, it's a real crisis. I feel so bad for these dealers that are scrambling to meet their customers' needs and for these sales folks who are, who are in their living doing this, who can't deliver on what they're able to sell. It's insane. So long circle around to answer your question. There's no negotiation. <laughs> no. Excuse me. You're lucky if you can get one. The dealers are not taking an, a, you know, a crazy markup. They're not. Uh, the dealers are, are the good guys in this, and it's really, you know, this parts shortage that uh, I'm afraid that's ne going to need, need real government um, control and government, and that gets us into politics, and I don't want to get there, but it's a crisis for our country. Gloria Minard. Do you turn off your propane when uh, filling the gas tank? M me? No, you don't. I don't. I don't. Never have. 10 years doing it, uh, I do maintain my... It probably my, would be a good thing it, to turn it's, it off. Yeah, they suggest you do that. Yeah. They suggest when you go in a Don't tunnel. Don't do what he does. Turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we always are telling everybody about things we don't do right? And I thought you're supposed we'll to... We'll come in with our hair sticking out all over. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're supposed to stand by your man here. Uh, oh. Yeah, you, you should, okay? But I don't. I don't. Uh I'm pretty confident of the of the integrity of my RV propane system. We have it checked uh, throughout the year, and um, I don't I don't turn it off when I uh, when I fill my gas tank. Never have. If they say you have to turn it off, turn it off. Oh, I shouldn't. You shouldn't have told Jennifer that. You now she's going to turn make off me that propane, it. fella. Lindy Rollins. Okay, my awning got rained on this morning, so I left it out to dry. More rain coming, so I retracted it. But there was uh, still water on it. How bad is it to roll up a wet awning? Bad. <laughs> well, we, we all do that. Let's, let's face it. I sometimes mean, you, you have know. to. Yeah, sometimes you have to. Uh, my suggestion is, Lindy, as soon as the rain ends or you get back home and it's clear, um, retract or uh, extract the, uh, is that the right word? Extract the awning. Get that awning out. Yeah, get it out. And then let it dry as best as can. You just don't want to get it, put it away wet all the time. One time it's not going to hurt you, it, but it's a good idea, as Jennifer said. You don't said. want mold. You don't want mold. Mold is, is no good. Mold is our enemy. But uh, So I don't know whether you're doing more camping, but wherever you get, put it out. It'll dry very quickly in the, uh, in the sun and do that when you get home as well. That used to be the worst part about camping in a tent. It, it always rained because we live in Michigan. Yep. And... Uh, then you had as quickly as you could get home and set that thing up in the middle of the yard and let yeah, it dry. Dry out that canvas. Mold oh my is gosh. nasty. Yeah, mold is not good. No. Uh, Richard Pura. Hey, Richard. Richard and Colleen up in uh, Marquette, Michigan. They're part of the group that goes winter camping with us every year at the Quamadon Falls State Park. 
We are traveling the Blue Ridge Parkway in August, staying at All Harvest Hosts. Is there any boondocking? Your Appomattox? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, you could, you know, I don't know. Uh, I've not, I've not been there. It's a pretty popular area, so it gets a little bit harder. And most boondocking when you're east like that is, um, you know, it's in state land, state forest. Uh, there are not a lot of national forests out there. Almost all national forests and many state forests have places where you can boondock or do dispersed camping. But I can't tell you any that are in that area, uh, Richard. So uh, if you have any, that's why you need to get our app and share it on the interactive map. Hey, we found a great boondocking spot here. Maybe somebody will put a spot. Yeah, and maybe somebody else who said, somebody oh, listening. I know one. If you know one, because you're going to hear us say this going forward from now on. Hey, go put that on our app. It's the, in, and we'll, maybe we can put that link up again in a minute here and we'll show you how to get there. But get this app and that's how we can really help each other by, by using that app and sharing information where it is. Um, so uh, I think Phyllis is probably screening some questions, but uh, we can't get it up there. Uh, is the app called Steps? Yes, that's what it's called. Uh, that's what it's called. It's Steps and I don't know why they call it steps because, you know, you want to put a location in and they call it a step, but that's what the name of the app is. And uh, that's what you want. And we do want you guys to share those places like Richard's question about where we can find a place to boondock in Appomattox near Appomattox. If you know of one, get, a, get our app. And then it's just a matter of just going to the app or going online and you can do it. Uh, there is, thank you, Chris. There is the uh, map right there. If you just go to rvlifestyle.com slash interactive slash map or interactive hyphen map, see that and, uh, and get the map. Uh, you can then once you get the app, you can then have an account and then you can go on. You can also use your desktop too. And you can put your own photos up. It's really cool. Just give it a try. You'll love it. Uh, Ray Petrie. I have a question. Are the dealers lifetime warranties worth doing? No, no, I don't think so at all. Uh, I think an extended warranty is what you want, but I would not recommend getting one from a dealer. Uh, what I would urge you to do is to go look at wholesale warranties. And I think in our on our partners page at rvlifestyle.com, you kind of got to go to rvlifestyle.com and then extras, and then you'll see a, a listing for partners. Click that. You'll find in that list uh, a listing for, uh, there's the list for partners. You'll find a list for wholesale warranties. And what they do is they take a look at your RV and uh, your age of your RV, and they will go shop for you and come back and say, here are the best deals for you. And that's where I would recommend if you're thinking about a, an extended warranty. Don't take what your dealer offers because the dealer gets a a kickback from the warranty people. It's not necessarily the best deal. Uh, find out the best deal. It doesn't cost you anything to get a quote from wholesale warranties. We've been talking about them for a number of years now and really recommend them. Go to them and, and get the best price for you. Uh, Walt Baudi is watching from Cave in and Rock, Rock, Illinois. Illinois. Uh, come visit our cave. That would be fun. What is your cave? I want to see Cave you. in uh, Rock, Illinois. I don't know. Did you put it on our app? Get our app, put it on there. We'll go check it out. That's what we can have so much fun with this app is when people have these places, we can then go and say, oh, look, we're, we're near Rock, Illinois. Let's go visit uh, Walt's Cave. So uh, I, hope you, I, hope I, I hope we're telling you about how cool this app is enough that everybody gives it a try. Uh, good luck for you, Walt. <laughs> That's great. Uh, all right. From, uh, is that Miami, Sammy? That's pretty good. <laughs> How reliable are the builds of the to towables being built in short order these days to satisfy the demand? Do you suggest getting an extended warranty or buying from particular manufacturers? No, you know, the towables are all pretty simple compared to motorhomes to put together. You know, it's basically a box. It's just a box. And they have not... Um, been affected nearly as much by the parts shortage as the as the motorized RVs out there. So the, I don't think the quality has taken a hit at all. 
Now, that said, there are some, some pretty chintzy uh, trailers out there. Uh, that uh, you know, When you shop for a towable, I guess the first thing we would tell you to do is go look at what kind of wood they use in the inside construction. Anything you buy, be it a motorhome or anything. Yeah, yeah motorhomes too. And what you don't want is pressed wood. You know, that pressed fake wood, we call it, you know, because what happens is uh, the vibrations on the road. Our friend Dean at Leisure Travel Vans used to say, you know, that driving an, an RV on the road is like driving is like having a constant 6.4 earthquake, you know. Um, but as it's driving down the road with those bumps in pressed wood does not hold the screws well. You'll find, you know, trim falling off. You'll find, uh, you know, cabinets getting loose. Pressed wood is is a pretty cheap way to build an and RV. And they do the pressed wood so that they can make the vehicles lighter. Because it's not real wood. It's light. So I mean, it's a cost factor, but it's also trying to make it lighter. And the, and the other thing they do is they'll take this pressed wood. And I don't know the mechanics of it, but it's this fake stuff. And then they'll slap uh, like, like vinyl. Like vinyl contact paper over it. It looks like it's a wood trim or it looks nice, but it'll peel right off. You know, it's just, and it will, it'll all start to curl eventually on you. So those are the kind of things you look for. You don't want an RV that's made that way. And you were talking about towables not falling apart. I, I'm not going to say the brand name, but I can think of two towables that we know about that is a name that everybody knows and loves. And, uh, they had all kinds of leaking leaks and problems. Leaks, yes. Yeah. So okay, it yeah. just seems like you can't trust anything anymore. And uh, maybe if you want to get an extended warranty, I don't know what it costs. I don't know what it covers. I, I'm a big believer in extended warranties. But uh, again, I one of the main profit centers for a dealership is selling those things. And, yeah, and, and they, they also will sell you insurance if you miss a payment and all that stuff. Yeah. First of all, do your best not to finance it to a dealership because, you know, they say, oh, we got a great rate from this bank. Go find your own rate. You know, join a credit union. You'll always get a better rate, rate from your own credit union. Um, and, and I know I'm alienating any dealers that are watching us, but that's their profit. They, you know, every salesman will get another $100 here, $500 here. So um, shop around if you're going to do extended warranties. Uh, shop around if you are going to, or even your insurance, shop that around as well. You know, get the best price on that. We have a, I think we have an insurance partner that we recommend called uh, RIS, Recreation Investment Services or something like that. And they do the same thing as wholesale warranties. They'll find you the best insurance policy for your situation. You can pick by rate and coverage. Um, so don't just take what the dealer offers you. And, uh, I, I, it's not that I have any recommendations on particular manufacturers because they all have issues with that. And they all have a economy line that they build where they chintz on the good stuff. It's uh, the world that we live in today. Somebody told me once, even dog food, you have a reputable brand of dog food and you buy it. You better keep checking the labels to find out if some other company has bought them out and they're using inferior products. And it seems like that's with everything in life. There's something that's awesome and wonderful and then this global stuff somebody yeah. buys it yeah. and the quality is gone yeah. so you never take anything for granted a name that you knew and trusted and was wonderful greed is a powerful powerful corruptor isn't it and i'm sounding like an investigative reporter again but the longer we're in the industry the more you know in, in, in living this rv lifestyle the more we've we find out these things. Well, everything in life. Everything in life. It's not just that. It's that. Yeah, it's everything. That's you got to. You got to be on your toes. What brand type grill do you use? He says. Says Bob Leach. Well, you we know, just got a know. Coleman. I think it's in our. Uh, we have a gear page that we do uh, where we try and list the stuff we use all the time. Uh, Bob, there's nothing special or fancy about it. It's just a cheap it's little a C. two burner, <laughs> two burner Coleman propane grill and we have used that for how many years a lot of years we've, we've bought two that. of them in fact we've gone through two yeah of them. we're always we don't have time we were going to go check out a boating store we were going to yeah somebody said get a boating one uh 
black. There's one that starts with black, a grill that's, I can't remember. The so name if anybody else has got a yeah, really Yeah, you can put grill. it in the comments. Sure. Uh, we're happy with the, with the Coleman. Um, it's a little propane thing. It works real well. But, and it, um, our, we line it, we put aluminum in there to catch the dripping so it's not so hard to clean. Now, I work with Mrs. Clean here, and she we, we wash that thing every time we use it. Mm -hmm. So we take the, you know, the grill. That's why we use the aluminum to catch the gripping, so we still clean the yeah, especially scrub, scrub if brush. Or, it was it, was it SOS pad? Yeah. It, it comes because of being in a B, where if you put stinky grill in your, what do they call it, garage? The garage, the basement. Basement, whatever it is. That's right where your head is. Yeah, so I want you to you're like sleeping. Right I want you to like the smell of that. So we clean, clean our grill. It. Every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Greg Barton. Okay, are tire sealants needed and worth the cost? Is it better to just monitor the tire pressure closer? Uh, Greg, I always preface those kind of questions by saying I am not a mechanic. I don't do my own oil changes or any of that stuff. But I can also tell you that I've never had a tire uh, sealant. Um, and I think it's better just to monitor your tire pressure. There's Roads two. are so bad. There's so many potholes. Oh, everything. my gosh. It's awful. Now, we there. just had um, we had a slow leak in uh, the one. of We have dualies on the back, and the outside uh, rear passenger tire had a slow leak. About every four or five weeks, I'd have to tap it off with, with, uh, with air. I thought it was a nail. Then I thought it was a rim leak, which is more expensive to fix, but it turned out to be a stem leak, a valve stem. Um, and they fixed it. Uh, it cost me $100 to get it fixed, which Ooh. sounds ridiculous, but you have, yeah. you have to get into a shop. I call. I went to one of the big discount tire stores. Did I tell mm -hmm. you that when I called them up? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Down the Detroit. I went to the, the biggest one, and they have a big American flag out front. I said, oh, they're being nice guys. And I walked in, and oh, they were like. You called. I called. Because right. I bugged him. I said, don't just think you're going to walk in. Call. This is a tire repair. So I said, and the guy said, oh, yeah, just bring it by. We'll look at it. So I brought it by, and I figured, okay, you know, I'll wait for a repair. I've had other tire, you know, car retires. They fix the car. The guy says, oh, we can't do that. It's dualies. I said, well, you yeah, I When I bought four brand new Michelin tires from you, you That's did six. that. And, well, that was a $1,500 job. Of course we're going to do that. So we don't have a jack that can get it up to get the wheel off. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I can. I have hydraulic jacks on mine. I can lift it up and you can get it up. We, he says, it'll take three days for us to get to you. We have 60 people ahead of you. Now, I don't know. All I know is I'm not doing business with that company again. <laughs> so I went to my, I said, I remember this other company I worked with uh, a couple, three years ago. And I went to them and they got me in the next day and fixed it. Now, it did take me, you know, an hour, an hour, hour and a half for them to get it up on a rack and take it off. So I think a hundred bucks is, was more than reasonable shop time and they fixed it and it was, I was out of there, but I wouldn't get tire sealants. I think uh, having a tire pressure monitor and then having a uh, air compressor that you carry with you is all you need. I have the, I did a, we just had a blog post on this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think it was last week even on the air compressor we use and it, it does just a great job, did a terrific job. And, uh, uh, when I have to tap it off every three or four weeks, it would be fine. But we finally got it fixed. Uh, I do have a tire pressure monitoring system that came standard on our RV. Um, there are uh, TPMS systems that you can uh, buy as an extra that you put a little tiny thing on the, you screw it on the valve, and it will register wirelessly. Uh, I did a review on that. You can find that at rvlifestyle.com. But I wouldn't bother with the sealant. I don't think that's worthwhile. I've not needed it in 10 years. Uh, Blackstone, that's the name of the grill. Thank you, Ray. You're our hero. A Blackstone <laughs> grill. How many of you use that? If you do, put it in the comments because I keep hearing about that. And I keep meaning to go check it out and to, and to get one. And, Write that uh, down over there so we don't forget. Yes. I will. I will make a Tell me we got our kids Blackstone. here and grandkids yeah. and dog. And yeah. Okay, yeah, a lot of I'm, I'm writing it down. Blackstone Grill. Thank you, Ray. Uh, comment. All right, your RV lifestyle ex experience is a gift to your followers. You two have always had great advice and tips and always provide great content on many topics. Keep it coming. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. That, that means a, a great deal to us. It really does. Uh, wow, that's good. 
So we're coming to you tonight. Uh, usually we do it. This is the studio that we use for the podcast. And uh, frankly, the reason we came is because I've been down here all day working on our uh, on our, our system. I should show you. Let's see. I think I have a, there's a back view of us. Hi there. <laughs> and this is what we have here. Uh, over here is, uh, for those of you, there's a lot of techie people. That is a Rode Podcaster Pro mixer. And with that, I can do all sorts of things and put little sound bites and all that in. And I can say they see the old microphones. Yeah, those are our... I don't even want to know what those cost. Oh, well... And I don't want to know what that costs either. Yeah. Now, can you see that right there? That's the microphone we're coming into you tonight. And I think we finally have our sound right. And so uh, we see your pictures and your comments right up over there. And right there are your comments that we're reading. Uh, so... It's pretty fun. We've got another couple of cameras in here, but this is the studio that we use. And uh, uh, if people really want it, I'll give you a, a tour of it sometime, or you can ask any questions. Uh, but it's it's fun. We've been working on this for a long time. Now, I actually, I should point this. See all these desks? We really need to get these desks out of here. And we want to build another table here. And then we want to do something about our background there. And... Uh, kind of fix that up and make it neat. But um, now what's this we stuff? <clears throat> You're the I one do. Yeah, <laughs> who yeah. has the passion to yeah. make it good. And that's good. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just that's like, I never at. see you. Steve, right. Looking forward to seeing you all in Natchez. We're looking forward to seeing you too. You know, and, and uh, Steve is talking about, oh, we have a, uh, we have two groups, two ways people have come to support us a little bit more. One on Facebook. We have a Facebook RV lifestyle supporters group. Oh, look, Phyllis is so good at this. She's got information out there. And there's also one on YouTube. And um, we have a gathering that we're doing for all the members and supporters uh, in uh, mid-October in uh, Natchez, right across the river from Natchez on the Mississippi River. And uh, if you are coming to that, it's sold out. Sold out in like a week. Uh, I have some great prizes. I mean, really <laughs> great. make everybody feel bad. Well, the, the ones I want to get the members excited. I haven't had a chance to time. I have some really great prizes. So you want to be there uh, on time. And uh, we'll have to figure out a raffle ticket or something to give it to them. But some great prizes, stuff that we've reviewed and tested over the last few months that uh, we don't necessarily use, but we've tested it. And the company say, oh, we don't, don't send it back because you used it. Well, we're going to give it away. So I can't wait to do that. We are trying to work on a, on, a, on a couple of gatherings for everybody. And as soon as we get some information on those, uh, we'll send them. We're actually looking at one in the next month or so up in the Michigan area. So I don't know if people can make that, but we'll let you know. Thomas Hughes. Any uh, predictions in 2022 on used motorhome outselling new as the pandemic comes to a close and campsites becoming more available? Well, here's the deal. I don't think campsites are going to become more available, not for a while. Uh, and two, is the pandemic really going to come to a close? I was just going to say. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. you're right. I hope it comes to a close. Uh, but it's still kind of crazy there. Uh, used motorhomes, I think you will. I've been saying this for some time. Uh, I know I've had a couple of critics who come on, other influencers. There's going to be no glut of new of used motorhomes. I think there will be. I think there will be. I don't think it'll, I think it'll start to show up in the next few months, um, maybe a year, two years for sure. It'll be all over the place. There'll be lots of used motorhomes for sale for a couple of reasons. I mean, just logic because the new motorhomes that people have ordered will come through. And so people will want to sell their used ones. Uh, and so that's going to happen. But also I think a lot of people are going to become very frustrated by not being able to find a campsite. Uh, there are ways to find campsites. Uh, we talked about um, uh, the big trends that we're seeing, you know, people uh, buying their own campsite where they know that they can use it X amount of weeks of year and they can still travel, but they have a, a base. We're seeing more of those start to develop. I did one on Tennessee a while ago, and I know there's another one that's about ready to open in um, Nevada, similar operation, and, and there are others. So, uh, uh, all that's going to keep people still out there in the RV world and new campgrounds are being built. That's just going to take a couple, three years to come together. 
But I do think you will see more used motor homes on the market in the next, starting really, you'll notice it in the next year. You'll see it this fall if you're astute and look, you actually can see some of it now on street corners as you drive around. But it, it's, it's not quite here yet, but there will be a lot of used motor homes out there, I think. Deacon St. John. Are you excited about any RVs coming out in the near future? Uh, not really, because uh, the dealers, the manufacturers, we're talking about motorized RVs, are pretty much totally committed now trying to find chassis and parts to complete orders that they already have. So there's not a lot of new things that are going to be coming out. If they get a chassis, they're going to build to an existing order rather than do some of the in innovative stuff. Uh, the big show that everybody's been waiting to see that will really kind of show us where we are is uh, coming up in Hershey, Hershey, Pennsylvania. I think it's September 10th. I think it's open to the public. It's, it's not then, it's shortly thereafter. Um, and I have heard now of several manufacturers that have decided not to exhibit, manufacturers who normally are there all the time. I can tell you that the biggest RV retail operation in the country is Camping World, and they're not going to be at Hershey this year. Do you remember the last time we had Hershey? They took up like a quarter of all of the exhibition space. They had so many RVs. They're not going to be there. Uh, they've figured out how to do RV shows online. Uh, and I, I've heard of some other manufacturers that say it wouldn't be right for us to build uh, show models to, to, to display at Hershey at the expense of people who have been waiting in line now for months and months. And you can understand that. So uh, I'm interested to see what happens in Hershey. I think it's going to be a disappointment for a lot of people because there's not going to be a lot of new uh, things to see there. Uh, it's always a great gathering. It'll be a lot of fun. I think we're planning on going. We kind of go back and forth, we, but we've got our credentials and we are planning to be there, I think, right now. But um, uh, uh, nothing that I know of that's coming that's really cool. Ken Cooper. Just a comment. TPMS systems are great. I feel very safe using the one on their fifth wheel. I blew one tire on a side of the interstate. was not very safe. Purchased a TPMS system when I got back. So if you don't have one already in your RV, uh, consider that. There are a number of them. I have a review on RVLifestyle.com. Just go, go there and just search under TPMS and you'll find the, the link. Uh, and we talk about uh, just how awesome that is to have as a system. And we did a video on it, too, on our YouTube channel. So it's there as well. Uh, TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring Systems. And I think it's one of the biggest safety features that every RVer should have. You do not want to have a blowout as you're diving down the road. Everybody drives too fast you know, out there. Yeah. And, and, you know, but when you're in a 15,000, 10,000 pound RV, a blowout is is lethal it mm -hmm. could be lethal so be careful chris allen i bought my 2017 thor majesty majestic motorhome class c from cruise america and they said the sale price was going up on all of them i guess i got mine just in time you did you did chris uh you know that's a great place to buy an rv cruise america cruise america makes uh, uh it's a big rental company you see them you go to any of the national parks out west, particularly, you'll see them, but you'll see them all over. Um, and they go, they really maintain those RVs. And I don't know what the mileage cutoff is when they decide they'll sell them at retail. But when you buy one from them, you know that it's been well maintained. It's been well used, but it's been well maintained. And uh, and and you can you can be sure mechanically and structurally, it's it's in good shape. So uh, you did. Prices are going up. Hey, thanks to Bob Keefe. A four ninety nine super chat over on YouTube. All right. Do you still prefer Betty's over RV super bags? Like the idea of separate sheets from super bags. I personally will never go back to super bag. I love my Betty's. He As, loves that thing. You do too. Well, I do too. Except, well, I guess even in the it's RV a little harder to to uh, you know to to wash, but she makes me put them together. And I, I've got that down pretty good. 
Yep, that's good because you can't just wash sheets. You have to wash everything. Yep. So you take the top off and the bottom and you have to put both of them. And we have twins. And you were saying that if it was a queen or a king, you're not sure. Yeah, I think I'd have to go to the laundromat. I don't because know. I don't, I wouldn't put that in my my home washer. We probably need that. to talk to somebody who has a king and ask. Yeah, them how we that do works. need to ask. But but even in the RV super bag, for people that like to stick their toes out of the sheets and the blankets, <laughs> I was talking to somebody when we were at that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, place yeah, yeah. Who likes to stick her toes out the end? And I do too. I prefer that. I guess in the winter you like being all slick. I, as a I did that with mine. I actually the other night. I just I just unzipped mine from the bottom and I was able to have my toes free. Well, that's what I got to do. Yeah. 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 So, but I I love I, it, it's really cool. Now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're the logical one. I'm the emotional one. Yeah. Yeah. Dan Flynn. Will there be towable model displayed at Hershey? I oh yeah. I think there'll be a million of them. Yeah, there will be Dan. Lots and lots and lots of them. So, yep, lots of towables. Fifth wheels, trailers, you know, they'll all be there. So you'll mm -hmm. find plenty of them. The Hershey show is, uh, is billed as America's largest RV show. And with Tampa, it's a toss up, which one is really the larger, but it's a, it's a big one. Lori McPherson. Will seasonal campsites be more in demand if campsites are harder to find? I'm hearing a lot of people are doing this more and more. Me too. And yes, they are. Uh, and they've been in, in demand for a long time. But um, it's, it, you know, people are speaking up for them mm -hmm. two years out now. So, uh, yeah, seasonal centers, uh, seasonal sites, if you wonder what those are, those are RV parks that have seasonal rates. You know, maybe you spend a couple thousand a month for uh, a spot and people are buying them, you know, for three months at a time, four months at a time. So I think that will happen. Excuse me. <coughs> yes, I would like to see a studio tour. <laughs> What equipment do you use to do interviews on the road? Do you take the, the road podcaster to record or something else? I do. Uh, this is the road podcaster. And uh, it is a like a little mixer, but it's got all sorts of fancy stuff in it that's really cool. We have one of those that we keep in, in the RV. And we use that. Um, and we for years, when we just did an audio version of the podcast, that's what we use. I don't know if I can do it. For example, it has things like, uh, well, let's see. I'll just, uh, I'll try this. Let's see if you can hear this. No, you can't because I don't have it. Oh, Mike's never mind. Got news. Good. <laughs> uh, I don't have it. Uh, I do have it. Here we go. No, I can't. Oh, well. Anyway, it's got all these little gadgets and buttons that you can push. Uh, but we do take that. But I have, I have that feeding into... Um, can I show you this device right here? See that? That is a little video switcher from four different cameras that I have here. It's on four now, and there's camera one. And so the that feeds in the audio there, and then that feeds into, uh, let's see, I can show you the camera that we use is here. This is actually a teleprompter. And this is the microphone that we're using tonight. And what else? Um, and when I do videos on the road, we're using, why don't you grab that cam one of those cameras there. There are several cameras there. There's one. Where's the other one? I'll get this one. You can grab you the other one. got to give them a name. This is the, um, the brand new uh, um, M50 Mark II from Canon. And this, uh, this camera is the Sony A6100. And I use these two for primarily on the road, but we also do audio with these. We don't have any separate audio. We like both of those for and audio. And this is called? This is called a dead kitten. We have a longer one. You can't really see it. It's on another camera that we have, uh, but it's a. It's called That's the a dead kitten. Name. It is a terrible name, but it looks like a little dead kitten. You know? But every dog out there goes after Oh, this. yeah. Whenever I'm shooting, the dogs will come up and... I yeah, figure out good. what that is all right standing mannequin that's a great name it says uh boondocking will be bigger than ever true yeah it is and that's that's one of the things we're hoping with this interactive map that we're talking about if you're just joining us let me just tell you one more last pitch about our interactive map this is pretty fun we just are announcing this tonight for the first time this is a, a map that you can access uh on your desktop but the first way to do it is is through an app 
And if you go right here, you can see it in which we've already gone through and we've listed about a hundred uh, places that we've stayed, that we've camped at, we've boondocked at, maybe museums that we've seen, a few dog parks, fun stuff along the way, restaurants that we like, uh, road trip information, area of, about national parks. Some of them we put links in so you can go to and click them and find a story or a video about them. But um, while we can, we're going to add hundreds more of our own stuff like that, you have places. And the more people in our community that then go onto that app and share their places, the richer a resource that will be. Because you can search by state, county, city, area. You can filter it by campground, boondocking places, whatever. So uh, we just want to invite you to go over there right now, check it out, uh, share a place. If you have a place, if you have a, you can put your own photos in. Many times it already knows the place and it will grab photos on it. But we would love to see more and more of you put stuff in, in there. Uh, and that's what it's all about. We're going to share a whole bunch of that. It's going to become, you know, there'll be thousands of sites on there as more and more people join it and put stuff. Um, as we run out of time, we got to talk one more week of our sweepstakes. We Do I have it down here? I think I moved it upstairs. It, I think you I know oh, where it gosh, is. It's I don't have the other room. We have a great prize. Uh, I think we're giving away. Uh, you hard. know where it is? It's Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, that's all right. It's we'll just talk. Uh, we have five of them, and we showed you last week. These are the uh, Hokena uh, Emergency LED Flares, and it's a little tiny compact case that has uh, three. three emergency flares. They will do flashing lights that can be seen a mile away. They'll do a steady light you can use as a flashlight. They'll send out an SOS if you really need help on the road. As I said, they can be seen a mile away. They also give you a couple of emergency blankets if you're in a place where it's cold and a, and a device that will break automotive glass, which you need to get out, or cut a seat belt if you're in an accident. It, it's just a great resource. And we're giving away five of those, but you have to go and enter. You have one more week. We will be announcing the five winners next week here on Ask Us Anything. And uh, we're, we're pretty excited about that. So go to the sweepstakes and, and enter that. So the time has flown away from us tonight, and uh, we are sad to say goodbye, but we'll be back with our podcast on Wednesday. That's right. We'll be back on Wednesday. All right. Um, please think about joining uh, the uh, interactive group uh, and that map that we showed you. I think that that's, uh, it's free. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a cent, and it's a resource that will really bind us all together as a community. We'll all have a great time with that. I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. Uh, anything else I missed? No, they can all come over for ice cream. Yep, we're going to go upstairs <laughs> and have ice cream with our granddaughter and our uh, our daughter. And come on over. Uh, we got uh, we got two gallons, so uh, two half gallons. Two half gallons. Two half gallons. So until uh, it's empty, you're you're welcome to to some. So uh, God bless you all. Hope you have a great week. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the podcast on Wednesday. Happy trails.